Don't forget the Palestinian brothers and sisters in your du'as. I'm gonna leave a link in the description in case you wanna donate to a charity that has a 100% donation policy. Asalaamu Alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. So these two footballers, one from Manchester United, one from Real Madrid, have done this celebration and here's what they say it means. It's something I planned ahead. My goal celebration is based on trust in Allah. I believe everything comes from Allah. There may be some injuries that I see as bad, but I believe that as long as I continue to work hard, everything will be very good. I'm trying to do everything the right way. I work hard every day. I leave the rest to Allah. This is the meaning of this goal celebration. Now this video is something that is going to be beneficial for everybody watching. It's something that affects us on a daily basis and that is the consequence of our decisions. Well, you can divide what they said in three parts. Yeah, One, he said, trust in Allah and it reminds me of a prayer and this is a wonderful prayer used by many people and it goes like this, God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, courage to change things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference. In other words, there will be things that you can change that are in your control that you are expected to work for. There are certain things that then past a certain point, they are no longer in your control and you have to leave them in the hands of Allah. This is where tawakkul, trust comes in and knowing the difference between the two is very, very important and the more experience you get in life, the more you're able to tell. Boom. The second thing that he said was, we might see something as bad, but it would be good. In other words, our vision is limited. We have the pixel, Allah has the picture. Our understanding will always be limited. Look at even our vision. It is only a small part of the spectrum. We can't see ultraviolet light, infrared, even when it comes to our hearing. We hear within a certain decibel range. We can't hear ultrasound. We can't hear very high pitched dog whistles. Even our akal, our common sense is based upon the society and the culture that we're in. The books, the websites, the news that we're exposed to. It's very limited. So of course due to this limited colonized thinking that we have, of course we're not going to see the whole picture. So this is where we need to trust somebody that does have the full picture and trust that he does want the best for us. Allah says in the Quran in chapter 7 verse 196, وَهُوَ يَتَوَلَّ الصَّالِحِينَ and he is the guardian of the righteous. If you are righteous, then he will be your guardian. It's as simple as that. You don't need to worry. This is a confirmation, a promise that he is saying that if you are righteous, you live your life by following the commands of Allah as shown by the Prophet wasallam. you will be protected. Now protected doesn't mean that you're going to be in cotton wool and you're going to be walking on clouds and the likes. People like Asiya, the wife of her own, people like even the Prophet wasallam when he was in Ta'if and he was bombarded with stones. Of course, being close to Allah doesn't mean you're going to be protected from everything. It means that Allah will give you the strength to overcome it because this world is a, a world of test and examination. If your friend promises to cover your shift or your mom promises to receive your parcel when you're not home, you will be at ease. But here Allah is saying that he will be your guardian. And if you are doing the righteous things, then why do we not have this satisfaction when Allah is saying this to us? And then he said, I leave the rest to Allah. This is cognizant and reminiscent of a saying that I love using, which is do your best, Allah will do the rest. That's one of the philosophies of Islam. Oh, you have oh, to do, oh, oh. Yeah. Do, you, do your best and Allah do the rest. Yeah. And finally guys, it's this illusion of control. We are deluded by the materialistic elements of society. 
What do you mean, mate? I'll tell you. For example, parcel delivery. That's something that we can control. Amazon will tell you we're delivering on this day between this time and that time. You can pay extra to even make that time slot even more narrow. You go to a fast food joint, you know you're going to get your order within a certain time. Movies. You can watch any movie ever made on demand, listen to any track ever made on demand, this fills you with a false sense of control and you feel that you can control things. However, there are things you cannot control, but we superimpose this onto other things. For example, death. You cannot control when somebody will leave you. Marriage. You can try to influence the other person and show affection, but ultimately you can't control if they're going to stay or they're going to go. People that have been married for long periods of time, they don't know certain things have been building up and boom before you know it that person is gone. Success we think is in our control. I'll revise this amount then I will get this grade then I will get this job. <clears throat> Not necessarily doesn't necessarily work like that, then people fall into depression. And when we fail to realize and distinguish between the things that we can control and can't control, then that's when we fall into depression and that's when we start even pointing our fingers towards Allah. But there are three fingers pointing back at us, telling us, yo, you have failed to understand the mission. Let's leave it there guys. Until next time. Assalamu alaikum.